out here on scenic Milwaukee Avenue in Jefferson Park, and this is the quintessential storefront theater, the Gift Theater. This is David Price, who actually put it together and built it, and uh, is the technical director. And we are just going to walk in. It's a very tiny space. How many seats? Uh, there's 42. 42 seats. Okay, so now we have our spacious lobby here, <laughs> where the 42 members of the audience congregate. One small dressing room right here off the lobby. Now we're in the longest, narrowest theater, I think, <laughs> in Chicago. Uh, the Gift Theater, as you said, 42 seats, a long, narrow stage. Sometimes there is panels so that the actors can kind of slither along the back if they have to make an entrance on another side. But very often, the, I guess the staging is just we make done it so, so that it's easier. Everything's stage left. Okay. <laughs> this is a very public space. So the actors have no place to hide. Hi, I'm Hedy Weiss, theater and dance critic for the Chicago Sun-Times. And today we are at the Gift Theater, where director Jonathan Berry and Michael Patrick Thornton, who is both the artistic director, founder, and leading actor, are here just to start talking a little bit about uh, the Gift Theater's first Shakespeare production. So welcome. Thank you. I'm wondering what said, now is the time, or is it just this play? Michael really said, now is the time. I've had a relationship with Andrew Hinderocker and the gift for, and that had been sort of like our primary conversation. So very contemporary play, right? Very contemporary, new work, like, like language driven, but in a very exciting way. And, uh, and then Michael called sort of out of the blue and said, hey, we're thinking about season stuff. What do you think about Othello? And I had to, I did, I sort of did a little bit of a double take and I think I laughed out loud. Uh, and, and I said, ah, uh, can I reread it? Is this uh, your first Shakespeare this is, directing? I, I've done some in classwork, but this is my first sort of uh, fully realized production. We had a really great conversation, sort of about the why now conversation, but I said I just wanted to make sure I could read it and feel like I had, for me, a point of view and, and not feeling like I had to direct an Othello, but what would the gifts Othello be and what would my Othello be and what would that sort of like coming together be? Um, so it was, it was a really exciting opportunity, but it was definitely led by, led by Michael. So Michael, what was the impetus for you? Why did you choose Othello? We consider it part of our, our responsibility as an ensemble to keep ourselves on our toes and keep stretching ourselves. And the fact of the matter is like, I started off in Chicago in 99 doing Shakespeare at the Ivanhoe. Uh, which is now a Binney's, um, which mm -hmm. is negligible. Maybe the space is being better used now. But <laughs> um, so I got diverted away, and then you know we just kind of were thinking about what we were all doing um, as an ensemble. We have so many people who leave for the summer to do Shakespeare, and you know, my history with Shakespeare. But we've never done it together, and I think an ensemble should should really take advantage of every opportunity to learn from each other. And the more we can play catch up with each other the better of a collective we're gonna be. Um, so it was, it was a consideration of, of how to keep us on our toes and how to grow. Um, I was also a little uh, very frustrated with like the impasse in politics and, and what I thought was, was if you distilled it at its essence, uh, the fear of the other, which I think is what uh, is really cooking uh, through this play. And then I, it is a play, as, as Jonathan always reminds us, that does thrive on glances and side looks and innuendo and whispers. And so we have these panels that, that are on wheels and, and they're going to switch and people are going to be behind them and in front of them. Yeah, and you know, it, it was 24 feet wide and 12 feet deep here. So I think our space, out of all the Shakespeare plays, I think, I think uh, the gift can really help augment what it feels like to be in the minds and hearts of these people by virtue of how intimate our space is. And this play is also obviously at its core about envy and professional jealousy and, yeah. and um, romantic jealousy. And so there is the Moor, Othello, who's played by Kareem Bandili, and then there is Iago, who is the conniving, really jealous man. Honest, honest Iago. <laughs> what <are> you? <laughs> and, and I'm wondering, um, obviously you work in a wheelchair, that's, and yeah, nobody sees it. <laughs> Um, and I'm wondering if there is that 
that tension, you know, that um, Othello is able-bodied, uh -huh. and there is, I'm wondering if you talked about that, or if you even use that, or if you just ignore it. Well, I think, you know, I, I don't like to talk about my process too much, but I think, uh, I think anything I do has to be filtered through the wheelchair. Um, I am assuming that it was in Cyprus over nine months ago where I was injured in battle, so uh -huh. returning there uh, is a great psychological hurricane. Oh, you that's know. really interesting. Um, I mean, no one's going to, that's not, I mean. That's your a, story. That, 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 that's just for me, but, you know, how do you make a space as fertile as possible? I mean, you know, we're sitting in it's panels and a, a black box, right, and some lights mm -hmm. and sound, so uh, having a personal relationship with this island um, seems like uh, a, a, a wise thing to do in terms of playability and, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, you know, you assume that for what you sacrifice for your country, you would be rewarded. And then to be replaced with this Excel spreadsheet dork, you know, <laughs> Casio. Outside, yeah. um, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, everything I do is in some ways right. um, a, a reckoning with what I can and can't do. And now, just to get off the subject of Othello for a second, um, you've been trying to expand this theater a bit, and there's a firehouse, old firehouse down the block. Uh, is there? I hadn't heard that. Uh, yeah, I hadn't heard that. <laughs> so, it's right down the block from here? I, I heard that you bought huh. it for a dollar from the city. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so what's, what's the plan? Uh, the, well, the plan right now is, you know, we've met with architects and we're going to be submitting a, a formal redevelopment plan to the city of Chicago. Uh, I, I've not asked for it for a dollar. That would be, um, I got to beat looking glass by a penny. So if, if we get so lucky to get to that point, maybe 99 cents or something. But, <laughs> but no, uh, it, it's, um, you know, we're, we're, we're filling up here. And the fact of the matter is, you know, we want to have all of our ensemble members who want to get their equity cards. You have something true to our hearts to keep theater affordable. Our top ticket price is $35. You know, and then you have productions which cost almost $60,000. And 42 seats. And 42 seats. Even if every single seat sells out at top price, you know, so, you know, those days have long passed, but um, uh, I'm curious of what a space looks like that is more of a, a, a community gathering center um, that you can hang out in at a pub, whether you're seeing the show or not, you know? I think there's been some attempts to do that Some here, more discussion in the lobby and more. Yeah, exactly, you know. Um, I was 16 or 17 in Ireland and my cousin uh, was taking me to the Abbey and I asked him what was playing, and just like on the way from one room to the other to get his tie, he said, oh, it doesn't matter, I don't even remember what's playing, it's the Abbey, it's always great. And it took me probably 10 years to realize what, how, how unbelievable that statement was, that, that this, this theater had created such a relationship with the patron that he actually didn't even know what he was There's seeing a place that to night. Hang out. And it didn't matter, because he and his wife were gonna go get a drink and dinner there in the theater beforehand, see the play, and then go uh, hang out afterwards and maybe with some of the actors and I think if there's if, if there's one thing I'm a big believer in is that that we need to bring the arts down a little bit to an everyday level where the consumption of art is just as ne necessary as like going grocery shopping you know and I think you know we have this a celebrity culture in this country that's very unhealthy and I think the more we can we can have actors and artists accessible uh, and, and having a bite or burger or, or beer next to somebody and, and engage in a conversation the more I think you you can inspire people that, well, maybe they can do it too. Well, thank you, Jonathan, and thank you, Michael. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, I look forward to seeing the production. Okay, thank you. And thank you for tuning in to Curtain Call.